Hello you lot, Wayne here, um, from a slightly grim looking Bolton but the sun's still shining up there and it's coming through a little blue spot so you never know we might still get a bit of sunshine, I've got an itchy nose, um, might be a bit of a fever, eh? Ooh. anyway, normally Mr Positive but I'm not going to go on a too much of a rant here, it's just some things I find Frustrating, but absolutely hilarious at the same time. Now, down south, they've got this Mayor of London. Oh, I like to refer of as a silly mayor. Because um, up in the north, that means something else. Now, anyway, along with a lot of other cities, they've adopted this ULES, Ultra Low Emission Zones which they now intend, or they have, expanded. Now, the bit I find um, intriguing, puzzling, frustrating, and absolutely mind... Um, well, it just makes your brain want to explode when you, if you think about it too much, is the fact that they've done all this on the premise that some people are suffering with asthma, etc., etc., which don't... Don't get me wrong here, I do not, I'm not saying I don't care about these people in any way. Obviously you do, don't you? You'd be a bloody idiot if you didn't. But, they've done all this because of air quality. Now, forget about the fact that this stuff can get blown on the wind. Um, and diluted in the atmosphere. Uh, to an extent. Uh, we all know there's a limit with all these things. But the bit I find... Two bits that I find um, impossible to swallow about this are if you drive around as much as I've done in the past and I'm starting to do again now, now I'm starting to feel better. There's a bit of positivity. Is um, you'll see a lot of housing estates being built. Now, if, if you live in the north and you go anywhere near Blackpool, there's the M55, which especially when the lights are on, turns into a car park on the way in and on the way out because there's an incredible volume of traffic wants to go through the lights at Blackpool, yeah? Right. Now then, on your left, going into Blackpool, down the M55, I'm just going to use this as one example, yeah? Or maybe I might even sling another one in a minute. But how did they get planning permission for the housing estates that they've built right at the side of it. We're on about now a bit more than a chip and a putt for all you golfers out there. So it's, they're banning cars from going near cities that don't comply with the ULES um, emissions, yeah? So you've got a car that's passed its MOT and it's past its emissions, right? Emissions are part of your MOT, yeah? So it's past its emissions. But all of a sudden, you go to a, a city, a town, and that's not good enough. So, first question. If it's wrong to take a car to a, to a city or a town, why is it okay to build hundreds, sometimes thousands, of houses near these roads that are supposed to be such death traps for people that live near them? So I want to answer that question first. So you can't take you can't take your car to the city, but you can bring the houses to the road. Ooh. Next question, right? They bring out a, sc a scrappage scheme. Right. What seems to be conveniently forgotten is, in America alone, a um, year or 18 months ago, they said they had close to 300 million cars on the road. I'll let that sink in. 300 million of them. Now, in America, as everybody knows... They love their V8s, etc. 
And they don't have three litre V8s like we have. No, 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 no. They have six, seven and eight litre V8s in America. Now, one state is clamping down on emissions. Yeah. That one state has probably got as many vehicles in it as our entire country. So one, this um, this imbalance between us and and other countries. Why is why the other country? Why is it uh, Great Britain that's got to do this first? In a, t a time of austerity, at a time when um, the the poorest amongst us, and I've been one of them recently. Think on you know with all this cancer nonsense with me and Anne, right? Now, I know what it's like to have a fiver, uh, fiver and praying the, the gas or the electric don't go off because there's a minimum payment on either one of them. So I sat, sat there with a five pound note praying the electric don't go off. And you're a proud tradesperson and obviously a very proud lady, my, my missus as well. So I know what it's like from that point of view. So forgive me if this sounds a little bit, um, it does have a little bit of an edge to it. So you can scrap your vehicle. But here's the kicker, right? You're in business. You've got a van. 15 years ago, when we were all being encouraged to buy diesels. Um, oh, no, diesels are much better because they use less fuel. So less fuel means less nasty emissions, etc., etc. Because they do so much to the gallon. Which is true. You will not find... A petrol vehicle that will do what this van will um, on the amount of fuel. You will not find an electric vehicle either that will do it economically or will do it at all. I can fill this van up and if I want to run it down to the orange light, we're talking between five, nearly 600 miles on a tank. This will do. Yeah, this one's um, you less compliant. But it'd do even more if it wasn't, believe it or not. All right? Which, like I say, I'm not encouraging. Why are we not being given the option of um, carbon neutral fuels? And people are going to say, oh, they're not 100% they're not carbon neutral. They don't have to be at this stage. Right? Follow me reasoning here. If they are... 80%, only 80%, I'm sure it's higher than that, 80% um, carbon neutral. That's instant. And the other 20%, you will create more carbon swapping to something else. Because you've already got the infrastructure You've already got the fuel stations. You just go in, no different than you do now, fill up. Yes, the fuel will cost, initially, will cost a bloody fortune. Yeah? But all, everybody that's, um, if you're using your vehicle for business, then the government could give incentives to use these fuels. They're costing less to the people who use them the most. Again, bringing our carbon footprint down now i'm going to use reason and then at the end of it let you lot decide whether this is this is not being done because they've, they've, they're a bit numb or are they not doing it because it doesn't make people billions to make these electric vehicles you have to again rape mother nature rape the planet for precious metals or elements that literally do not grow on trees. If you use carbon neutral fuels, the difference is absolutely instantaneous. And you do not have the carbon footprint of, remember this, right? Getting on for 300 million cars in America. That's just America. I reckon you could treble that with the rest of the planet quite easy without exaggerating. So you're nearly on a billion cars on the roads. Yeah. We've been building things with internal combustion engines 
for over a hundred years. Oh, again, so I'm not exaggerating, a hundred years. That's a bloody long time. And we don't churn them out one a week. A hundred years we've been making these things. So does it therefore not make sense that scrapping all of those, you're going to release the reverse of all the carbon that went into building them? Yeah, because not, not, they're not. Every, you're not going to have prisoners in prison pulling these cars to pieces manually without using any, um, without producing any more carbon. Are you bloody hell? There's a massive industry in this, produce belching out all sorts of carbon. Yes, your your van or your car has to has to meet the, meet all these emissions standards going into these towns and cities, but a massive great big scrapyard not a chance because they're running vehicles that are not uh, required to comply with all this this is about money this folks there's absolutely no um no science common sense science anywhere that supports this absolute shit ules has to go um, battery vehicles have a think about it people the massive infrastructure that needs to be built I mean I'm using America as an example we are a we're bloody hell we're a tiny like a tiny state compared to them right but what are we are we the test bed for everybody else if you have the massive infrastructure to support electric vehicles then they make a little bit more sense. A little bit more sense. But a billion vehicles, a billion lots of batteries. And that's not like one battery. Each battery in a car has hundreds and thousands of cells. You know, they have at least hundreds. Some have thousands of cells in them. We're talking about these Tesla trucks and things like that. I'm not picking on Tesla, by the way. The, the idea of driving around in something that does absolutely zero harm to the environment is applaudable. But we need something that, that makes a difference right now. And scrapping every single thing that has an uh, internal combustion engine is absolutely nuts. Yeah, but some people may find that they can transition and they can use an electric vehicle if they're doing short journeys, they're only going in and out of towns and stuff like that. Yeah, brilliant. But to meet the demand for electricity, you're going to have to build those lovely, cute little things called nuclear power stations. Because to support the growth in population, the building of all these new homes which are all going to need electricity remember and then you want everyone to switch over to electric cars we can't produce that amount of electricity that's a fact it's physically impossible at the moment for us to produce that electricity we can't do it from renewables i mean you, you ships wouldn't be able to get in and out of britain we'd have that many bloody wind farms up which, again, they're not carbon neutral at all. You the, the carbon produced in setting them up. You know, ships ships don't use uh, carbon neutral fuels at the moment. Mm. Doesn't make sense, does it? This has got to go. ULES has got to go. It makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. Thank you very much for listening. Anyone associated with this ULES, any pop, any politicians or uh, parties that say this is the way to get through this, we need to get rid. This should not be um, having this, this amount of power because it, it's literally just a tax on the poor. I'll, li I'll, I'll leave you with this, this one that I forgot to, put, to add into this. There's a lady down south, she has a plastering company, right? Building trade so it's close to home. They said to her, 
we will give you something like £2,000 per van towards swapping over to compliant vehicles. Sounds great, doesn't it? Here's the next bit. She's got to scrap these vehicles. Then she's got to get proof she's scrapped them. Then she has to send all this in. Remember now, she can't work. They've effectively just closed down her company. All right, you're probably not going to do it vehicle, you know, on mass for vehicles. So, I mean, she's got no choice now because they've just brought it in. There's no, like, slow transition or anything like, no, boom. The, the guillotine comes down, that's it. So now she's faced with... She doesn't know how much they're going to give her, either. So they're just going to send this woman bankrupt, aren't they? You can't do plastering on a push bike. You can't go on the bus doing plastering. You turn up with a van and all your bits and pieces, including your materials a lot of the time, to do a job. It's not going to happen. When it's costing you an absolute arm and a leg, a unaffordable prices for us tradespeople to come to your house because you live in a certain place we're not being funny it's just going to cost us a fortune because we can't afford to swap vans i went into debt to get this van um i didn't know i was going to be poorly at the time but um but then i borrowed enough to buy a vehicle that was um, Euro 6 compliant which means I can go into these areas now not everyone can do that you may already still be paying off HP higher purchase on a vehicle that you've bought for your business to to work so you can't afford it you 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 might owe more than the vehicle's worth a lot of people are in that position so ULES has to go. It's got to go. Um, I'm not a fan of setting fire to the world. I'm not one of these people that think that it's all a conspiracy theory or anything. But if the scientists and the fuel companies can produce these um, carbon neutral or almost carbon neutral fuels, get on with it. Get them at the pumps. And get it so that you can choose to use these fuels. You might not be able to afford it every fill up. But we could have, a, uh, have um, as these fuels are ramping up and the other fuels are ramping down, you've got a transition, haven't you? But you're not building all this infrastructure. You're not taking up more room that could be devoted to building those homes or not building over more greenery at the side of roads. You've got farmland um, going like this because they're building all this crap on top of it add all these bits up and I'm sorry but switching to these carbon neutral or almost carbon neutral fuels is the way to go it just happens and it makes a difference right now as soon as you put that fuel in that's it you've made an 80% reduction in your carbon footprint from driving your vehicle it's got to be more affordable so um you can either use these fuels and if you're already doing a small mileage think on you're not going to notice that um price hike from that you know from the fuels we've got now to this as the amount of it grows in use the price will come down and eventually will probably be cheaper than the fuels we've got now without killing polar bears, etc. Just a thought, everyone. And definitely, I would love the scientists and the politicians to watch this video. And use your loaf, use your common sense. Not this this false intelligence of taking a piece of information remembering it and spewing it out again that we've been taught that that's it that's that's intelligence that's not that's being a parrot that's being a, a tape recorder that's being a dvd etc proper common sense 
these older vehicles that are nothing wrong with them that have been really well maintained etc swap fuels and they're 80 percent less um they've got 80 percent less crap coming out of them to kill the planet anyway i hope you if you enjoy this this video give us a thumbs up etc give us a follow or whatever this is just wayne that wayne being a granddad um and just putting my thoughts out there what do you think no hate you know I'm, I'm i can have people that completely have the opposite view to me uh, and we'll have a discussion but i don't hate you it's all that nonsense that we've got cancel culture if someone doesn't agree with you you've got to cancel them you've got to have world war three you don't need that either do you anyway bye for now